If, you know, if the big gamble is to go all the way to November 2020, which I agree, and lose, it's the end of democracy. John Doyle in. Heck off, commie. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, pals and gals. Welcome to Hack Off Commie. My name is John Doyle, and Jeff Daniels went on MSNBC this week to sell his Broadway performance of To Kill a Mockingbird and, of course, to let his heart bleed all over the floor of the newsroom. For those of you who aren't familiar with Jeff Daniels, he was the guy that got his tongue stuck to a pole in Dumb and Dumber. Hurts me a bit to go after this guy because that was one of my favorite movies growing up, but he also implied that I, a fellow Michigander and Trump supporter, am both immoral and brainwashed and am therefore unknowingly leading us to the end of American democracy. So I believe that the criticism is warranted. Basically, what I want to do with this is explain what the strategy behind framing the issue the way that he did is, why he ties it into To Kill a Mockingbird, why actors and writers and those types tend to be anti-American SJWs, why they feel empowered to speak on politics in the first place, and why their opinion means virtually nothing. Cool. So let's uh, let's go through this MSNBC clip. Um, the KKK comes. They come mm -hmm. for him. Mm -hmm. And it's Scout that recognizes one of her hooded neighbors. Mm -hmm. and says Mr. Mr. Cunningham. Cunningham. And I started sobbing. I mean, our children are watching this moment. Atticus's children are, are played by, by extraordinary actors in the play. And it is this reminder that in this moment in our politics, our children are watching. Those of you who haven't read To Kill a Mockingbird, you're either illiterate or a communist. I mean, it's a, it's an American classic. Basically, a black man is accused of raping a white woman. A well-off lawyer named Atticus Finch volunteers to defend the man. He's able to prove that the black man is innocent and the markings on the white woman actually came from her father. But the all-white jury convicts him anyways. John! Spoiler alert, it's like, buddy, it's been out for 60 years. But there's a part in the book where uh, Jean Louise, who's the daughter of Atticus, recognizes a man wearing a KKK cloak in a lynch mob outside of the jail where Tom Robinson, who's the wrongly convicted black man, as one of her neighbors, Mr. Cunningham. And then, of course, she bursts into tears because she's reminded of modern politics. She's completely softballing this one to Jeff Daniels. And she's sneaky because she's not explicitly stating that people that support Trump are as bad as KKK members, but she's drawing that connection between what happened happened in this fictitious legal drama set in Alabama and what's happening now in the United States. And watch, because Jeff Daniels makes it a lot worse. The children are watching, and, and I live in Michigan, and um, after the election, I was surprised at some of the people. You know, I said, can you believe this election? They go, yeah, isn't it great? And you're going, whoa, my wife's on Facebook, and these go, oh, we got another Trumper. And here's the connection coming full circle. I mean, the people that watch this content watch it because they don't think for themselves. Maybe they'll go through one additional thought in response to something they're told. And that's why this is set up like this. If Jeff Daniels had said, you know, in preparing for this role, I realized that what we read as children and to kill a mockingbird, where you realize, wow, my neighbor's a Klansman? I never would have guessed. That's awful. It's just like now realizing that our neighbors are Trump supporters. People would have probably been like, I mean, sure, but dude. Come on, those are two completely different things. But instead, by just stating the context within the story of, okay, this little girl has this moment where she realizes people that she knows are actually awfully racist and violent people, and then going on for Jeff Daniels to talk about living in Michigan and seeing fellow Michiganders supporting Trump, and then going like, whoa. Like he's undergone this great moral betrayal by these people, and it's exactly parallel. And it's designed to be that way so that when the mindless viewers think they're one additional thought, then they make the connection. They're like, hey, wait a minute. Me finding out that my coworker supports Trump that's like when Jean, when Jean Louise found out that Mr. Cunningham was a Klansman. They have to lay it out there for the viewer without spoon feeding it to them directly. Give them just enough so they feel like they made the connection by themselves. You know, and it's just you didn't see it coming. Atticus goes through this. I know these people. They're, they're good people. There's, 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 and there are reasons why. And he's an apologist. He's an enabler. And I think there are people in the Midwest between the coasts who don't pretend, who don't know anything about, who don't care about this, who don't have time for this who have to make a decision now. You have to decide whether, like Atticus, you believe that there is still compassion, decency, civility, respect for others, do unto others. Remember that? Do unto others. That's my favorite part. The like Atticus part, like these people always have to tie it into the fictitious stories to prove their point. The interesting thing about this story in particular, they conveniently forgot about it during Kavanaugh when they tried to bar a qualified candidate because of a baseless rape allegation. Where was their Atticus Finch stand in then? 
What about the symbolic meaning of the Mockingbird, the title of the book? Basically, there's a part where they're shooting at tin cans with an air gun, and Atticus says, never kill a Mockingbird because it's done nothing wrong and therefore doesn't deserve to die. Insert abortion argument here. And then this, of course, is the whole theme of the book with Tom Robinson, an innocent man eventually being killed for a crime of which he was innocent. So why are Trump supporters being attacked and labeled as hateful? We have done nothing but vote a man into office. Now we're being spoken to like second class citizens. We're being we're being belittled on national television. We're being ostracized. We're being assaulted, deplatformed. All of this is punishment for acts that we have not committed, but you perceive as inherent to our character because we disagree with you politically. Cool. All right. Why is it like this? Because they lack perspective. They are convinced that anything that deviates from their worldview is incorrect and immoral. What's another theme in To Kill a Mockingbird? Perspective. Atticus encourages his children to look at the perspectives of other people. He does this when Jem has to read to Mrs. DuBose because he cut up her flowers and is being punished. He does this when Jean Louise doesn't understand her brother. So it turns out Atticus is an open-minded man of the law who defends the idea of innocent until proven guilty. Jeff Daniels should try method acting for this one. And you just didn't see it coming. It's not even a question for these people anymore. The debate is settled. Conservatives and Trump supporters are hateful. They are violent. They are racist. And so now that we have that established, we have to reflect and think, wow, we never saw this coming. Not you, not my neighbor, not, not my coworker. You have to be better than that. A Trump supporter? No, not you. It can't be. I don't know if this has ever happened to you. Let me know in the comments uh, what the story is if it has. But I've talked to politics with distant relatives before, and I mentioned I'm a Trump supporter, and they get all sympathetic. Like, it's one thing if they get angry. That I can accept. When they start talking to you like you're just this misguided figure that's been brainwashed, they start patronizing you like, oh, honey, you're better than this. As if they really understand these issues better than you, it's actually a self-fulfilling prophecy because when people talk down to me for being a racist and violent Trump supporter simply because I disagree with them, it actually makes me want to punch them in the mouth. But of course we don't. I disavow all political violence. But again, he says, I know these people, they're good people. They just, it's the same thing. Just, they're just misguided. They need our help. No, we actually don't, Jeff Daniels. I don't need your help figuring things out. You're not an intellectual. You're not even a pundit. You're a jester. Your job is to entertain us. That's what you do. The literature majors in the comments, but the jester is often the only one who tells the truth. Yeah, this isn't Shakespeare. This, this is a has-been actor trying to lecture the American people who elected Trump in a fair election, no collusion, no obstruction, on how they've lost their morality and how he, the brave Atticus, only he can set an example of standing up for good, of, of the lost principles of do unto others. Remember those? Yeah. No, I actually have no idea what you're talking about, Jeff Daniels. I've never heard of that before. Jeff Daniels, the Hollywood SJW, claiming America has lost its morality and then proceeding to cite biblical scripture as the basis for American morality. Perhaps he isn't so crazy after all. Where are you now? Because you the, everybody, because your kids are looking up at you going, but he lies. And, and I think there are a lot of people in the Midwest who are going, it might be enough for them. We're going to find out if, it, you know, if the big gamble is to go all the way to November 2020, which I agree, and lose, it's the end of democracy. Oh, but the children are watching. Mommy, but Trump lies. I love the, oh, but he, even the kids can see this. But then if there's a kid that supports Trump or even a person that supports Trump, it's, oh, well, they're, they're good people. They're just, they're just misguided. Such a shame. As for the end of democracy, we don't live in a democracy. That was by design, buddy. He says, if Trump wins in 2020, that will be the end of democracy. That either means that he rejects the constitutional basis of our election process and thinks that whoever gets the most votes should be president. And also that for some reason, Trump didn't end the democracy when he won in 2016. He was just going to wait until 2020 to end the democracy. Or that he thinks that since he's, you know, because he's in this echo chamber of anti-Trump propaganda, he's therefore so certain that the country is against Trump that if Trump manages to win again, he must have rigged the election. And of course, there's no evidence to support any of these ideas. These people know absolutely nothing about politics. The reason that they're so overwhelming leftists, these actor, writer, Hollywood types, whatever you'd like to call them, is because it's in their best interest. It really is. It's in their best interest for a few reasons. If I'm a writer in a free market economy, I could write the most comprehensive and in-depth biography of, of John Nance Garner, and I'd be lucky to sell like 2,000 copies. But someone comes out and puts, puts out a book series about a guy that fights crime in his underwear, he sells 70 million copies. If I'm a writer, if I'm involved in any sort of arts or creative endeavor, what I create and what has value to me may not be what is the most well-received by the market, and it may not pay me enough to have been worth my effort. Therefore, I will reject a system that acts in that way because I perceive it to be unjust. I perceive it to not have recognized my value as an artist. That's why these people are fundamentally against the free market. It starts when they're trying to make a name for themselves, but by the time their net worth reaches $45 million like Jeff Daniels, the ideology has manifested already. 
especially playwrights and stage actors. No one wants to go see plays anymore. Sure, you know, they work hard, but we have transcended those technological limitations. And since that's affected their market and the general appreciation that we have as a society for their work, and it's difficult work, they view the whole system as unjust. And because of that, it ought to be abolished. Another reason is because when you're a celebrity whose fame is rooted in entertainment, your job is to make sure that people do and then continue to like you. What's a good way to get people to like you? Prove how moral you are. Every time you go sell a movie or an album, just start talking about societal problems that have absolutely nothing to do with you or your projects. Then people will be, oh my God, queen, king. And then let me give them money. And then you sit back, you're drinking $7 coffee, checking your bank balance. Like, no, but for real, racism is bad. It's like, they don't care. They live in gated communities. They go to brunch. They drive luxury sedans. They aren't in touch with reality. That's why their opinions don't matter. They aren't in touch with reality. They feel empowered to speak about these things because of their job. I mean, if you spend your entire career people bending over backwards for you, you get recognized in public, people want you to write your name on things for them, they want pictures with you, you'll inevitably develop a tremendous ego after a while. And only with an ego of that magnitude could you actually have the audacity to go on national television and preach to middle America as if you're the epitome of common sense, the only voice of truth left in a sea of white noise. Sure, Jeff Daniels, I gotcha. Go back to entertaining people until you read a book or two about the elites selling out working class American people for political power and cheap labor. Then come back to us uh, with your soapbox, big guy. Hey guys, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. You can also leave it a comment with your thoughts. And of course, subscribe to the channel by clicking over there if you haven't already. You can also share this with your friends. I really appreciate that when you guys turn on notifications and share this stuff with your friends, family, whatever. Because as many of you have pointed out to me, YouTube, the thought police, they've been censoring the channel. They've been un, uh, unsubscribing you guys, turning off notifications, removing likes, removing comments, all this all this fun stuff that, uh, that this platform is doing. So... You know, what are you going to do? Uh, create your own YouTube. Yeah, well, I, I can't, okay? I can't. With what money? I'm getting demonetized. What? Wh where's my startup capital? Okay, well, thank you so much for watching, and may God bless America.